For number one, we want to find the common difference. So we're trying to find D. And we also know this is arithmetic sequence. If it was geometric, it would be quite a bit harder. So we want to find arithmetic sequence. We want to find the common difference. So we want D. What you need to realize to get that is for a formula, for a formula people, we're going to consider both of these terms as coordinates. The fourth term is negative 10. I'm going to write that as a coordinate. When you plug in 4 to the rule, you get negative 10 out. This one, when you plug in 12 to the rule, you get 38 out. So I'm rewriting your two terms as coordinates. This coordinate we'll call x1, y1. This we'll call x2, y2. So we're rewriting as a coordinate. And then what we realize is your common difference is the same thing as m, which is your slope. So you have to realize common difference and slope are the same thing. So when I change these, co these into coordinates, I could actually find the slope between these two points. And the formula for that is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's use the formula. Remember, we're going to use D, though, instead of M, because D and M are the same thing. So if I want the common difference, I'm going to take Y2, which is 38, minus Y1, which is negative 10, and divide by 12, which is X2, minus X1, which is negative, which is 4. And that would give you 48 over 6. So your common difference is, oops, I did this messed up again. Isn't this 8? Yeah. So your common difference is 6. Now, you can think of it as slope. I like to actually think of it logically. I just in my brain go, okay, from negative 10 to 38 is 48. That's my top number. And then I think from the fourth term to the twelfth term, that's eight terms. So I'm going to take 48 and divide it eight times. That gives me my common difference. It's easier for me to think of it that way, but for some of you who want a formula, think slope. It's a slope formula because slope and common difference are really the same thing. Switch to number two. We want the rule for this sequence. Now, first of all, you got to decide, is it geometric or arithmetic? And hopefully you notice this one's an arithmetic sequence. And the rule for any arithmetic sequence is A0 plus DN. There's the rule for an arithmetic sequence. So to do this, we first need to find your common difference, and then we need our zero term once we have our common difference. How do you find a common difference? Well, you just take the two numbers and subtract them. So you're going to take the negative 3 minus the negative 7. You always take this one minus this one. And what is that, 4? Would it have been easier to take 5 minus 1? Probably. But I just took the first two. And you always take the right one minus the left one, right next to it. Now, how do you, the zero term is the term before the first term. So if I want to go one step back, how do you find that? Well, if I'm adding 4 this way, aren't I subtracting 4 this way? So won't that be negative 11? One step back. So what does all that mean? Well, my rule is simply going to be a0, which is negative 11 plus D, which is 4, N. There's my answer. That rule will generate any term in the sequence. If I take this sequence and I want the 35th term, I simply plug in 35. And that will give me the 35th term. 
last one. Number three, I want the rule. And you first need to realize this one's actually a geometric. The reason I know that is we're multiplying each time by something. The rule for a geometric sequence is a0 r to the nth. <clears throat> So in order to do this, I need a0 and r, but you first need the common ratio, then you get the a0. So how do we find a common ratio? Well, we take the 12 and divide by 3, which gives us 4. And how do you find a0? Well, we got to go one term back. So we want the term right in front of this. Well, if we're multiplying by 4 this way, don't we divide by 4 this way? So we take the 3 and divide by 4. So won't it just be 3 fourths? The term right in front of this will be 3 fourths. So that becomes 3 fourths. So 3 fourths. And uh, from there, we simply make our rule. which would be a0, which is 3 fourths, and then r is 4 to the nth power. Now, what does this formula mean? Well, if you want the, fi the fifth term of the sequence, you plug in 5, meaning you start with 3 fourths, and you're going to multiply by 4 five times. What this one means, if I want my eighth term, I start with negative 11, and I'm going to add 4 eight times. That's what these rules mean. Your common difference here in the first one is telling you what you added each time to start with the fourth term of negative 10 to get to my twelfth term of 38. <clears throat>